This episode's FTR shoutout goes to Curious Guppiest. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next video. Make sure you're subscribed. How's it going everyone? Welcome to another Fish Tank Review. My name is Chris and you're watching Fish for Thought. This time I'm going to start on a positive note because last time y'all were letting me know that Chris, you gotta put some positive fish in there, like review some good ones as well, man. And I heard you guys loud and clear, so let's get started. Alright, we're starting off again with a pond. Now, this is a video and I watched it and it's basically showing the same sort of scenario here. Now, this pond is definitely more superior because you can actually see the fish and you can even see the bottom of the pond. It's probably got really strong filtration and it's probably very well maintained. It's even got live plants, even with the goldfish and people do know that um, goldfish tend to not enjoy eating Anubias although they eat like every other plant they can get their mouths on. I'm not a really big goldfish fan. Um, I've never really enjoyed keeping goldfish, although of course I have as a child. But you just gotta look at that face. Like, you see that face and it doesn't matter if you like fish or if you like goldfish, you're gonna like that face. Look at how cute that is. He's so gentle too, just letting his buddy ride on his head like that. I love it and I'm rating it 5 out of 5. This next one is also a very heavy hitter. I mean, look at that. It says a uh, 180 uh, liter aquascape. 180 liter, not really sure how big that is. Looks to be like 40 or 50 gallons. Um, but anyway, the scape is absolutely amazing. There's probably more fish in here than meets the eye right now, but they're probably just hiding in that lush greenery. Um, I don't see any dither fish. Um, I would probably stock this tank a little bit more, but I do also prefer just showing off the plants and having a really, really small bio load, which is what they have here. I wouldn't be surprised if they never need to gravel back at all. I think that's an epistogramma and it's showing off wild colors. It stands out even when the camera is so far away. If the last tank or pond got 5 out of 5, I gotta rate this one 5 out of 5. Now this one's interesting, I mean if you're judging by the tank, it's got a bit of spot algae. It's probably not the best maintained uh, tank there is, um, but it's got some Valisneria that looks pretty green. There's some floating on top or being left to grow to fill the top of the tank, which is pretty cool in my opinion. But it's what's interesting here is the fish that's uh, doing this behavior. It's it's one of the, the loaches and apparently so if you have a weak heart Do not keep loaches. They do things like this just to mess with you. I swear this is so cute and funny um, This loach is pretending to be dead and it's doing a pretty good job of that If this photo was captioned my loach died. I would just believe that that's a dead loach I've never personally experienced this behavior I don't keep many loaches in my time and I can't imagine this to be Advantage for survival at least in a fish tank because if he's dead He has a chance of being scooped or just not being fed I'm not sure what he's trying to do here except to piss the owner off. But I'm gonna rate it 4.5 out of 5 for the comedy and the Valisneria. And of course 0.5 off because of all the spot algae that's just left on the glass. 3 month progress, CO2 or dosing and canister filter was added. That's pretty hardcore, pretty awesome. I'm not sure if the CO2 is a must have to attain this progress, but uh, it's a very interesting concept. It's not a very technical scape, I would say. Um, you got the right kind of wood in the centerpiece, and then you're planting your taller plants, like the Rotella, or I think it's Ludwigia, all around the tank, really, maybe in all four corners and scattered throughout a little bit more. So it's not the conventional scape, and this is what makes it very interesting. It's kind of like a forest clearing where you see this centerpiece wood. It's a very creative aquascape. I don't see this every day, and you see the rainbow shark, definitely a well-fed guy, not overfed, just well fed and on some high quality stuff. I mean, look at those colors. This tank is nothing if not creative and colorful. I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5. Alright, this is very neat. The title is Gang Gang. Yeah, this is definitely like a Gucci Gang type of like fluval gang up, sort of shoot 'em up tank scenario here. Actually, I'm not so sure if all three of these are fluval products or even if any of them are. I'm pretty sure the long one in the left 
is the Fluvo Spec, I think. Uh, not really fluent in my Fluvo products. Don't really got the funds for that, you know? Maybe if they sponsor me, haha, <laughs> nice joke. But what's interesting here, well, first off, the Aquascapes are quite nice. I think my favorite will have to be the one on the very right there with the rocks. That looks like a lot of time went into it for a nano tank. But what's interesting is that I don't really see any fish at all. So on the far left, I would suggest definitely going with a little school of galaxies. In the middle, I'm gonna say some sort of shrimp. I'm leaning towards a mono shrimp. In the right tank, I'm not really sure, I haven't made my mind up for that, but I would probably go with a small group of Ember Tetras. Let me know what you guys think about these three tanks. Looks like a really clean beta tank and it's not too small for a beta as well, which I love. Beta looks healthy, looks happy. The fins are all nice and open. Nice use of live plants in the water and I think that's probably fake plants hanging out up top. Looks like some Cryptochorion to the right. Um, in the center left, there's a Anubius and then there's, I think Java Fern on, might be a piece of log. The only thing is the Anubius might be buried in the substrate and we all know that's a big no-no. We should not be burying the rhizome. The rhizome should always be out of the substrate and root itself into the substrate. So hopefully the rhizome is not covered or else it'll start to rot. Overall, four out of five for this tank. Now these next few tanks are sent to me by one of my viewers, uh, Johnny's Papa, and he says that these photos were taken from some of the local ads in his area that people were trying to sell these tanks. Fish with extra small tank with six fish. I think my eyes can see that with my eyes. Yeah, this is classic. I don't know how, I don't know what extra small means, but this tank don't look anything bigger than maybe five gallons. And yet it's got Oscars and goldfish, probably some Comet goldfish in there as well. I was presented with a better photo of the fauna in here. Yeah, it's confirmed there's two Oscars and at least four goldfish in here. I mean, there's no winning this argument, guys. Like if, if this guy's gonna say like, oh, I didn't know these fish were gonna to get bigger or they can't live in here well do your research before you buy something you wouldn't go out and get a dog and then be like oh I don't know how to take care of a dog or I didn't know this dog was going to get massive like you wouldn't just buy a chow chow out of the blue without knowing what you're getting yourself into and if this guy's like oh yeah um, I was just keeping these because I knew they were gonna get big but they're not big yet so I'm keeping them in this small tank well that really doesn't work either because if you equate that to a dog again, you're gonna raise a puppy and then just sell it and, and expect to be selling it sometime when it grows bigger? Like, what are you doing? Maybe this guy's adopted and he likes to make everything else in his life experience being adopted. Zero adoptions out of five. Wow, I, I don't know where to begin. Um, I was initially shocked that maybe they're keeping freshwater fish with uh, saltwater fish. I saw the, uh, I think it's a damselfish in the back. Pardon me, I don't know my saltwater. Um, but yeah, these guys are iridescent sharks and ballast sharks and they need really long, big aquariums. They're still growing and maxing out. That iridescent shark there might not be able to even turn properly to the other side if it wanted to. That's how small this tank is. And you can see just on the filter, like that is nasty. You've got a dead iridescent shark just hanging out. Um, they're putting this tank up for purchase, I'm guessing. Why wouldn't you take the dead fish out at least? Number one sales tactic, leave the dead fish in there all times. Oh, wait a second, there's another fish in there. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> I thought it was like a piece of rock. No, but that's another fish. That looks like an albino shark. This is just very sad. That fish right there, that fish is smart. He going up to heaven real quick. He knows like there's no redemption for this. Five out of five fish go to heaven. Man, this fish tank looks like my little sister's two gallon fish tank that she's keeping a betta in. You got a parrot cichlid, you got like two types of Oscars, and I didn't notice this before again, but that thing, yeah, that's a pleco. That's a freaking pleco. I feel like if I rate this one, I... I can't do it justice with a zero. Actually thinking about this more, this tank represents a good message that all races, no matter what color, white, black, Asian, um, that they should all get along, you know? Segregation is dead. Come together, guys. Sorry to end on kind of a tough note there, but hopefully by showing people more of these bad tanks that we can raise some awareness what kind of stupid tanks people are coming up with nowadays, and hopefully, 
it will make everyone want to aspire to have this sort of tank. If you enjoyed this episode of FTR, please like, comment, and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come, and don't forget to get your hands wet. <laughs>